Hello guys, it's Cash here, back with another video. Today I'm going to show you how to make a spawn GUI in Roblox Studio. And I don't mean spawn like choose a spawn, I mean like spawn items in the game. So basically you can use this as you're an admin or something, or you just want to spawn a car in your game. It's actually really simple, so let's get started. First things first, we're going to make a interface or screen GUI, whatever you want to call it. And we'll just call this spawn GUI, ignore GUI inset, uh, resound spawn, sure. And now we're going to create a scrolling frame. And this is the frame that we can use to spawn things. Make it a little smaller because I've learned that uh, things are way smaller in the actual game. Or way bigger in the actual game. Uh, so now we have this little GUI here and we can make everything good uh, also I learned this too if you take the middle image and you paste it into the top image and the bottom image it makes it a uh, square which is pretty cool okay and then if you change all the stuff so we can make this like orange or blue I like this blue make the border color white uh, make the scroll bar image white. Now we have a cool little GUI. And then we'll add a text label on the top of it uh, up here. And let me just scale this. Oops. Okay. And we'll change this to spawn spawn things or just spawn and that looks good you can change this to source sans bold make the text color the same blue it's pretty good and we can make the background transparency different add a UI stroke make that white and now we have a cool aesthetic and there it is, there's our little GUI, copy this, paste that there, make this a little bit above, and then we can change this to spawn things. Awesome. I'm um, probably going to make this a little less. So now we have the actual GUI set up, let's make uh, the buttons. So let's create this. Oops, and it's really hard to scale things when you're doing it in a scrolling GUI. So I'm just going to scale it and then drag this up. Um, it also helps if you scale with offset. So let me just change auto scale plus. And this is really weird. Let's change this to. Let's just delete the button and add it back. Okay, that works better. So it works better if you scale an offset you know, with scroll frames because they're just like that. It's weird. And then you can just change to scale afterwards. So let's change this to car. So you can spawn a car there. Scale that up. And this can be source sense bold. Make it blue. And then we're also going to add a UI stroke to this, but we're going to make it a bevel and then make it blue. And then we're going to make that border. And actually, ooh, it's not that, um, change this to white. Oh, it's pretty weird. We'll do this lighter blue. Or a dark blue. It's, it's pretty hard to choose. Um, I guess I'll just do like a little bit like that. And then make it round. That looks pretty good. And then we can also drag this down a little bit. So there's a car that we can spawn. Make that a little smaller. Oh. 
And I have no clue where it just went. Where's the text button? There we go. Awesome. Okay. And then we can add a UI list layout. Change this to the center. Make the vertical alignment in the center or top, I mean. So we'll order, we'll just make it name. Horizontal alignment center, same thing. And we could, like, to make it like that and make it go a little bit below, you could add a frame to it. And then you make the text button go inside the frame just a little bit, but I don't really care for that. And then in the UI list layout, we're going to add tin to the padding, which makes it like space out a little more. Uh, let's make that 20. There we go. And now we have a way to automatically organize everything. And that's my cat meowing in the background. <laughs> All right, and let's just go ahead and name this to car. And we'll name this to title. Oops, title. Name this to frame. And then we're just going to select everything. And if you don't have auto scale light, it's in the toolbox and plugins. Just look that up. It's called unit conversion. And that put everything on scale. And now we have a working little like GUI that works on all interfaces. So if I changed it to phone, it would work. If I changed it to tablet, it looks all the same. If I want an Xbox One, it would look like that, but it's just because I can't see the whole thing. And iPhone 4, nobody really uses that anymore, I think. VGA. Yep, so that just shows that you can see everything. And now what we're going to do is, since we have that, we can make it work now. So we need things that we're able to spawn. So let's go in the toolbox, go to models, and just find some quick things. So here's a sports car. Um, probably give me a virus in my game. Not trying to give you guys a virus either. This is, looks like a better car, but... Still might have a virus. Let's check it with Game Guard. And yeah, we found a bunch of viruses. Supposed viruses. Um, let's just do stuff that we know is not a virus. So let's spawn a zombie. So we have that. We know that's not a virus. And then we can spawn a tree which we know the pine tree is not a virus okay and now that we have these we can drag that to server storage drag that to server storage and then we'll change this to pine tree change this one to zombie and then just change this to zombie too. And actually, I'll just change this to tree. Whoops. Tree. And then zombie. Now, we don't really have to change the name because um, we're going to be firing the text. Uh, you know, actually, we'll fire the name. It uh, doesn't matter. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, we're going to fire to server with a remote event. And then we're going to get the spawner. Okay, and then also we're going to make sure these are unanchored. Okay, and then we can do spawn. Okay, local GUI equals script.parent. Local frame equals GUI.frame. And then local items equals frame get children and equals that game dot storage dot spawn fire server item name okay so that should do all the work for spawning on the client and if we go in the server script service call this spawn items local 
spawn equals game dot replicate storage dot spawn spawn dot on server event connect function player and item name and then local item equals game dot server storage find first child item name uh or no find first child yeah item name and then if item then we're gonna do local item clone equals item clone item clone dot parent equals game dot workspace item clone dot and then see we have primary parts in some of these in this one it's probably going to be the humanoid root part uh, but we can also just do origin position if we don't want to do that so dot origin equals to um, player dot character dot position actually we'll just do hit pose and then fire hit pose so now if we go back to the manuscript we can fire server with the item name we can also do game dot players dot local player get mouse dot hit dot pose um, and that basically just fire server with the mouse where it's pointing so if we spawn a tree uh, origin position is not a valid member. Yeah, so I usually get this error. If we do, hold on, game dot server storage dot zombie dot position origin position. Oh, okay. So you can also do move to, which is an easier way. Move to, and then we can do hit pose, and that should work too. And if we point right here, we can spawn a bunch of zombies. Um, and what we could also do is on the manage, we can do, uh, okay, we can do game dot players dot local player get mouse dot app dot mouse. Wait button one down connect function and then it does it okay um let's try that that works and then it just fires over and over because we already have wait oh it also has both selected hmm that's pretty strange Uh, I guess we could do then return. I'm not sure. Uh, hmm. Well, what we could do also is just get the mouse up here. Local mouse equals game dot players dot local player get mouse and do mouse dot button oh actually what we could do is local button activated equals false and then button activated equals true and then Button activate equals false after we press the mouse down. So mouse dot button one down connect function. Oops. Uh, right there. And then this will be if button activate equals to false. Okay. Or if button activated equals true. 
and that's gonna make it there we go okay if button activated equals to true and then what we're gonna do guys is we're going to spawn it so take the other thing right here okay and then just change this to mouse.hit.pose or dot p okay so now if we try this we have to press it over and over again which works perfectly it's exactly how we wanted it to work also I think these zombies attack each other which is pretty weird and you know if we press it multiple times too it doesn't do anything which is just what we needed which is perfect and that's how you make an item spawner in Roblox Studio um, but what we could also do is whenever we what we could also do is I'm gonna pause this real quick alright guys so that's how you make this uh, there's a lot of things we could do to fix like make more things about this like make it have a green outline but it's a little too much for this one video so I might make extra videos but if you guys want to download this I'm going to save all of this right here into Roblox and allow copying, allow comments and you guys can go here and download it and use this in your game. Alright guys, see you guys in the next video. Peace.